for the current power sources and its current use cases, what's the use case for electric? Like the, uh, the, the colloid engine, can you talk about where they're used today? Sure. So chemical engines are still used um, quite a bit once you're in orbit, but that's also where you might choose instead to use an electric system. And what people do with them, and, and this includes, you know, the ion engines and hall thrusters and our engine, um, is basically any maneuvering you need to do once you're dropped off. Um, there's, even if your only goal was to just stay in your orbit and not move for the life of your mission, you need propulsion to accomplish that because the Earth's gravity field changes as you go around in orbit and pulls you out of your little box. Um, there are other perturbations um, that that can throw you off a bit. Um, and then, you know, most people want to do things a little bit more interesting, like uh, maneuver to avoid being hit by space debris or uh, perhaps lower their orbit to take a higher resolution image of something and then return. Um, at the end of your mission, uh, you're supposed to responsibly get rid of your satellite, whether that's um, burning it up. But if you're in geo, um, you want to push it higher into graveyard orbit. Um, what's geo? What's what's um, so low graveyard? Earth orbit and then geosynchronous orbit or geostationary orbit? And there's a graveyard. What's yeah, graveyard? so those satellites are at um, like forty thousand kilometers. So if they were to try to push their satellites. Um, back down to burn up in the atmosphere, they would need you know even more propulsion than they've had for the whole lifetime of their mission. So instead, they push them higher, where it'll take you know a million years for it to naturally deorbit. Um, so we're also cluttering that higher bit up as well, but it's not as pressing as as Leo, which is low Earth orbit, where more of these commercial missions are going now. Well, so what, how hard is the collision avoidance problem there? You said some debris and stuff. So like, how much propulsion is needed like how much is uh, the life of a satellite is just like oh crap trying trying to avoid like little yeah, things around there i think one of the recent um you know rules of thumb i heard was per year some of these small satellites are doing like three collision avoidance maneuvers um so that's oh, not that's not bad. yeah but it's well, not zero um and it yeah it takes a lot of um planning and people on the ground and you know None of that really, I don't think right now, is autonomous. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, and then we have a lot of folks taking advantage of, you know, Moore's Law and cheaper spacecraft, so they're launching them up without the ability to maneuver themselves, and they're like, well, I don't know, just don't hit me. <laughs> and three times a year, that could be become affordable if it's like, if it gets hit, maybe it won't be damaged kind of thing, that kind of logic affordable in that instead of launching one satellite, they'll launch, you know, 20 small ones. Yeah. So yeah. if one gets taken out, yeah. that's okay. But the problem is that, you know, one good sized satellite getting hit, um, that's like a ballistic event that turns into 10,000 pieces of debris that oh, then yeah. are the things that go and hit the other oh, satellites. Yeah. yeah. 